Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Hugo, and today we're going to see what's going to be the best stocks for this week. We're going to see five stocks between IBM, EXO, ET, which is one of the stocks that I have on my portfolio, and we're going to do some market analysis and also see the heat map of some stocks uh, by sector. So stay around. Before I start, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like. That will help me with the YouTube algorithm, uh, and I want to reach the 1,000, and it's being quite hard to reach that value. So um i uh, please <laughs> subscribe to the channel with that will help me a lot so now let's have a look into these five stocks the first one that you are looking is with the ticker sbra uh, sbra uh, or sabra healthcare reads so this is a read in the health uh, care sector i do also have one already in my portfolio that i spoke in my previous videos which is uh, wpm also a read on the health sector and they pay quarterly the same as this one but has a lower dividend than this one. So this is a dividend yield of 9.04%. They pay quarterly February, May, August, and November. They are undervalued in 67.9%. And as you can see on the graph on the past week, they went down quite a lot uh, comparing to uh, other sectors. We're going to have a look uh, further on. Being so undervalued will be great to have on our portfolio at this time and age. Uh, we have uh, X even date on the 10th of February, so we still have plenty of time, the more than two days that uh, we need for it to process the, our order. And we have a financial health of two Gs, good, good. Uh, so uh, we have in terms of liabilities around 100 million and in terms of uh, assets around 7,000 million and with a lot of uh, cash on hand. Uh, we also have a future growth of 39.95% uh, uh, comparing to the last year we had a decrease of 10.8% so this has really good projections for the next year combining those two factors the being undervalued in 67% and the future growth of 39 I think uh, will be a great stock to have on our portfolio although uh, we need to be a bit careful of uh, the past performance wasn't quite great We'll have to do some analysis here why this performance wasn't great on the past year, but the projections are quite good and uh, having uh, a even yield of 9% will be uh, amazing. The next ticker is SUN or SUN or SUNOCO uh, LP. Uh, they have a even yield of 7.08%. Uh, they pay quarterly February, May, August and November. This has many that I already mentioned. We're going to have also Exxon, which is on the energy sector but has, uh, Sun has less uh, market cap than Axom. So Sun can be more impacted on volatility than Axom uh, due to the market cap. They are undervalued 39.2%. They are good. The ex dividend that is going to be on the 7th of February. So we won't have time to buy this one. So the financial health is two Bs. I think it's not two Bs, it's actually one B. The, in terms of assets li and liabilities, they have assets around 1.2 billion. And in terms of liabilities, they have around 1 billion. So there's not quite of a big of a gap here. Uh, I think it's not uh, enough to be two Bs, but one B only. In terms of the market sentiment, his, we have a hold, and in terms of future growth, we have a seven point uh, a minus seven point four percent, with the past performance being forty one percent, having a, a really good uh, past performance. Uh, the next year usually is not really great, and this is what's happening with Sun. So the seven percent we won't cover the future growth. Uh, I think this is not. A good stock to buy for this year or at least uh, for the next upcoming quarters and probably we're going to have better choices in the energy sector et energy transfer lp it's one of the stocks that i have on my portfolio so they pay a dividend yield of 7.03 percent they pay quarterly february may august and november they are undervalued 38 percent and the ex-dividend date is going to be on the 7th of february so we're not going to have time to buy this one as well the financial health it's a b we have a difference of, in terms of assets to liabilities, around 0 0.2 billion. So in terms of assets, we have 9 billion. And in terms of liabilities, we have around 9.3 billion. For that reason, we have a financial health of a B. On the market sentiment, we have a strong buy and the future growth is minus 11.8%. The past performance is 163 Since I have this stock since the beginning that I'm investing, in my case, the ex dividend is, is, uh, is going to be a little bit higher. I don't have intentions to sell uh, energy transfer, uh, although I'm still looking to the market and see some financial uh, statements in order to uh, validate if this is going to be a good investment for this year. If I don't do a sell off uh, like um, August or something, 
and then uh, reinvest uh, that money in other stocks that has a better uh, future growth. Although in terms of stock itself has increased in the past uh, week and it's been increased since ever. Uh, the other ticket that we're going to have for this week is going to be IBM, International Business Machines Corp. Uh, they have a dividend yield of 4.76%. If you don't have anything on the software sector that uh, give you uh, dividends, this is one that we should have on our portfolio. I do have Microsoft. Uh, they pay like 2% of dividend yield, not even that. Uh, it's quite low. Uh, ABM gives much more dividends. And in terms of business, they are trying to grow the business of quantum computing. Um, we still don't know quite sure what's going to be the next steps for this new processor, uh, but it's something that we need to have our eye on that. Uh, they are under 23.2%. The X dividend date is going to be on the 10th of February, so we are going to have time for that. The financial health, it's a B. In terms of assets, we have uh, 29 billion. In terms of liabilities, we have 33 billion. Uh, so uh, we have quite of a debt. Uh, they have done a lot of investment as well in this new area of quantum computing. And they have invested a lot of money in this new operating system uh, to work with this new quantum uh, processor. Uh, the market sentiment, we still have a hold. The future growth is around 10%. Uh, probably could be higher depending on the output that they're going to get from, from the software and, and the processor. And uh, the price performance was 13.2%. It wasn't great. They had increased uh, now as well. But bear in mind that Microsoft, Apple as well had increased. Let's not talk about uh, Facebook, that, that's a different story. Having this data in consideration could be a good stock to have on our portfolio. Last but not least, we have the ticker XMO, Exxon Mobile Corp. They have a dividend yield of 4.42%. It's one of the, the lowest uh, tickers that I have for this week, with the lowest has a 4.42% of dividend yields. Uh, they pay quarterly February, May, August and November. They are overvalued in 9.1%. Uh, it's quite a lot. Uh, all the energy sector went up quite a lot. Uh, some of them tried to move from Chevron to Exxon. But for me, I still prefer to go for Chevron than Exxon. Not only have a higher dividend yield, but they are still undervalued comparing to this one, which is uh, overvalued in 9.1%. The X dividend that is going to be on the 9th of February is going to be quite short for us to invest and get the dividends for this quarter. They have a financial health of a B, meaning they have, in terms of assets, around 55 billion, and in terms of liabilities, around 61 billion. So it's almost 6 billion of difference. We have a market sentiment of old, and the future growth is around 0.7%. Bear in mind that the past performance was 29, uh, minus 29.5%. So this is not great. Uh, this is, uh, I think, for this quarter, is not going to be uh, the best choice. So probably we're going to have better choices in the market like uh, Chevron and other uh, like Shell or BP, like the one I have also, and uh, instead of, of this one. So I do recommend you to have a look on other videos that I've posted and also uh, regarding those uh, stocks, for example. For this week, uh, in terms of market, as you can see, the SP500 went up 2.28%. Um, they went down quite a lot in the past week. Uh, uh, and Nasdaq as well, Dow Jones as well. Euro went down a bit to 1.23%. I don't have too much exposure on my portfolio for the Euro uh, European stocks, only UK stocks and Chinese and US stocks. And we have, uh, uh, in terms of Chinese stocks, went up 4.65%, although this doesn't cover anyway the uh, how much they went down in the past year. Um, so the performance of the Chinese stock has been awful. 4.65% uh, uh, in the past week has been great. Let's see if this continues uh, toward up uh, the next uh, coming months. In terms of uh, sectors, we have a big increase on the semiconductors and also on the financial uh, sector. We did had some uh, increasing on consumer goods and on the energy sector. That's why the stocks that we spoke today on the energy sector went up and you see the graphs, they went up quite a lot. But even with the increase in this past week, we still um, are too far to recover from the last uh, uh, top uh, uh, rise in uh, in December. So here we are seeing uh, the heat map. Uh, we can see that Microsoft actually went down minus 0.18%. We have uh, Facebook went down almost 20%. I did done some uh, averaging on the Facebook. 
uh, Apple is still up. Uh, this was one of the stocks that uh, allowed the technology sector to uh, end up. So we have Apple with an increase of 1.83, Nvidia, Qualcomm uh, with a 7.99, which is quite good. We have uh, AMD as well with an increase of 18%. In the retail, we have uh, Amazon with 11%. Uh, percent uh, and we are seeing here the sectors most impacted this week um, in a negative way which is the health sector the uh, manufacturing and also the uh, non-durables that didn't increase much with coca-cola and product gamble not being too much positive almost uh, in the same position um, here actually the biggest winner we had this week was electronic and the financial sector. So now let's have a look into uh, the SP500 and the Bitcoin. In terms of the SP500, we may see a fall of 3.6% on the sound size prevails. So we're going to uh, reach the, the 4400s, being this the uh, next uh, support, um, with the tendency to go around the 4300s. We are seeing it here overbought, but probably this tendency is going to continue to go down for the next upcoming week. So in resume, we may see a downtrend for the next week. Uh, although we have here, the moving average is quite close to each other, uh, but this is probably going to do something like this as happened before. So I do recommend to do some average for the next week, uh, since we're going to have some stocks in the deep. In terms of the Bitcoin, we're going to see a rise in the next upcoming week. We have all positive uh, signals on the MACD and also on the RSI, you may see a rise of around 1500 to 2200 pips with the upside prevails, so meaning that we're going to reach the 41,900. In terms of the RSI, we trading above the, uh, the 70. It could mean uh, either the pair is on the latest uptrend or just uh, being overbought. We may see in a week probably uh, a short but the overall is going to be an uptrend. The MACD is positive and above the signal line, and we have a positive configuration for the next upcoming week, uh, meaning that uh, probably we can reach the next uh, resistance around the 41,000. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tips for this week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like. That will help me a lot. And once again, thank you, cheers, and see you next week.